Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Oh, man, I am excited about this one. We're going to Caesars Palace, folks. We're going to Las Vegas, Nevada, the world's biggest toga party. And now I know this one is not held in the high regard, WrestleMania 9. However, this was the first WrestleMania that your boy Mad Mike saw live. I wasn't there in Caesars Palace, obviously. I was a child. But, um... I remember, oh, this was 1993, and um, Little Mad Mike was just turning 10 years old, and my first wrestling-themed birthday party was this WrestleMania. My mom made chocolate Hulk Hogan lollipops. They were all in red and yellow. It was fantastic. Um, but let, let's, before we even get into the matches, because there are nine matches here, at WrestleMania, uh, some good, some better than you expect, better than you remember, and some deserving of some hate. But um, we have to talk the aesthetic here. Uh, this was the first outdoor WrestleMania. It was held at Caesar's Palace, which is, you know, a, a very old Roman theme. And boy, did they dive into the Roman theme. Uh, Howard Finkel was called Finkus Maximus. Everyone wore togas. The Macho Man had a macho toga and was brought out on a sedan with Vestal Virgins. It was fantastic. He was eating grapes. If you ever want the best gift in the world, find the gift of the macho man eating grapes. Um, Bobby Heenan came out on a camel. And, um, oh, there's also, there's also a fresh-faced young announcer just making his WWE debut at WrestleMania. Jim Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, good old JR is on commentary, and I don't care what anyone says, with the possible exception of maybe WrestleMania 17, I'm going to say it, this commentary team is the best commentary team out of WrestleMania. Uh, Macho Man, Bobby Heenan, and Jim Ross. How can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? They're fantastic. Um. Yeah, I don't really have an issue with the commentary all night. Like it, it was really, really good. Um, but let's let's dive into the card because that's what we're here to talk about. That's why this WrestleMania gets a lot of hate sometimes. The first match, Intercontinental Championship match, Tatanka with Sensational Sherry going up against Shawn Michaels, who is the current champion with Luna Vashon. Now I know this match ends in a countout, which sucks. But this match is really fucking fun. It's a good, it's a damn fine opener. Uh, Shawn Michaels opens a lot of WrestleManias, or at least he has. I, I think, um, I think next year, next uh, WrestleMania ten is where he kind of turns from that. But, but he's he's a good opener for WrestleMania. He gives a good straw, good solid performance every time, and uh, yeah, he wins via countout. So Tatanka gets to keep his undefeated record, and Shawn Michaels gets to keep the belt, which is it's, it's really fun. Um, the next match, I don't think people many people will remember this match, but the Steiner brothers against the Head Shrinkers. By the way, WrestleMania debut for all these guys. Pretty much, WrestleMania debuts almost there's almost one in every match, basically. Um, but you got Rick and Scott against Samu and. Hall of Famer, Fatu. You know, Rikishi, way back in WrestleMania 9, folks. Rikishi was doing it. And, God, you know, the Steiners, th these are these are young Steiners, too. These, these, these Steiners are kids. And they have a really, really fun match with the Head Shrinkers. Um, I know the head, shrink the head Shrinkers weren't necessarily the best team in the world. And the commentary can get a little rough, you know, a little semi-racist. But, the match is really fun. It almost went 15 minutes. And these first two matches each go about 15, 20 minutes, which is amazing for a WrestleMania. And it gives you good long matches. It's kind of like what we would like to see from WrestleMania from now on. Uh, but yeah, both these matches, very solid. Now, the next match, one of my favorite matches in WrestleMania history because when I was nine, this blew my fucking mind wide open. Doink the Clown against Crush. Now, I know what you're thinking. 
What? <laughs> if you don't remember this match, uh, Doink the Clown was a heel back then. He was throwing buckets of water on children. Sometimes it'd be confetti. Sometimes it'd be water. Uh, he, he was an evil clown. And he pretended to have a broken arm to get out of a match with Crush on Wrestling Challenge or Wrestling Superstars or something like that. And basically, he had a fake arm. <laughs> he pulled out his fake arm and smacked Crush in the back of the head with it, setting up a WrestleMania match. And you guys, Doink the Clown gets his ass kicked. He really does. Uh, Crush, as I've said on the Mayhem Show, one of my favorite big men. Crush, uh, you may also know him as Brian... Wait, Brian Adams, Brian Clark is Wrath. But yeah, Crush was amazing. Uh, and then Doink the Clown tries to escape underneath the ring. Now, while he's doing this, a second Doink pops out with the plastic arm and whacks Crush in the back of the head. Ah, uh, so good. Double vision, double doinks. If you've never seen this match, do yourself a favor. It's only about eight. It's about an eight-minute match. Watch it. It's fantastic. It's great early 90s stuff. It really, really is. All right, uh, moving along. We have a newcomer to the scene, Razor Ramon. Wonder if we'll ever hear of that guy again. Against someone who somehow is making his WrestleMania debut, and that's Bob Backlund. That's right. Bob Backlund came back to the WWF in 1993, and uh, boy, the crowd did not care for Bob Backlund. They were chanting Razor the whole time, and Razor and Moon beats him quickly in a squash match. You have one of those in every WrestleMania. You just do. That's how it works. The next match, um, this was this was the big money match. This was this is what they were promoting. This is what we were excited about when we were kids. Money Incorporated, the tag team champions going up against the Mega Maniacs, Hulk Hogan and Bruce Beefcake. Now, before I get into this match, um, Hulk Hogan has a black eye. Uh, this is not part of the storyline. The, <laughs> the official story is that he was in a jet ski accident. However, most people think that there was some shady dealings between Hulk Hogan and Miss Elizabeth back in the day, and Macho Man punched him out. Now, depending on what theory you subscribe to, this makes the match a lot more interesting. <laughs> because if you think, like I do, that the Macho Man punched out Hulk Hogan and gave him a black eye, oh man, you have to listen to Macho Man's commentary on this match. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. Um... Yeah, but I mean, it's a very it's a fun match. It, Bruce Beefcake had an accident, and he was wearing a um, a titanium face mask. But between that, between Iris's briefcase, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of bells and whistles. It's a fun match. Um, Money Inc. tries to leave, which is interesting because we we've seen tag team title matches end on countouts and stuff before. But for some reason, the referee makes the decision. If Money Inc. leaves, they lose the tag titles. So they go back and, and it ends up being a disqualification. But this also marks the first loss for Hulk Hogan at a WrestleMania. Yeah. H Hogan was unblemished. Oh, no. Actually, I don't know. I'm an idiot. Warrior. I'm sorry. I should have said that when he lost to Warrior. But anyway, it's the second loss for Hulk Hogan, which is... Still a pretty big deal. I wonder if he'll some way find a way to make that up. Um, we'll get back to that. The next match, really, really fun. Uh, Lex Luger. You remember him from the WrestleMania 8 when he was talking about the World Bodybuilding Federation. Well, now he's in WWF as a wrestler, as the narcissist, Lex Luger. And Lex Luger, um, I'm pretty sure, gets the first entrance with pyro it's not the first wrestlemania entrance i think that would have to go to the rhythm and blues who came out in ddp's uh cadillac or corvette or whatever it was but lex luger is accompanied to the ring by um uh well let's just say there's let's say they're exotic dancers probably maybe they actually they probably work at caesar's they're probably like girls that walk around caesar's and give out drinks and stuff but uh 
this is definitely the most scantily clad women we've ever seen at WrestleMania before. Uh, it won't be the last time we see that, but yeah, and they have py- they have they all have mirrors for Luger to look at himself, and Pyro shoots out of the mirrors. So I think Lex Luger gets the first entrance with Pyrotechnics at WrestleMania. Really big deal. You can tell WrestleMania is becoming a bit more modern with WrestleMania Nine. The whole the whole aesthetic of this this feels like a show you could run now almost. You know, for the most part, uh, a few cheesy things here and there, but it feels like a show you could run right now. Um, but it's like Sluger and Kerr Henning, Mr. Perfect. It's a good match. Kerr Henning can have a good match with anyone. We know this. And I can't think of a single Lex Luger match that I enjoy more than this one. Uh, but yeah, it's really fun. Uh, Lex Luger does get the win, uh, I believe through chicanery by like putting his feet up on the ropes. And then he, uh, you know, that, that little steel plated forearm that Lex Luger has knocks out Mr. Perfect. Uh, yeah, just really good stuff. Now, now we get to the semi main event. Um, this and something else that happens a little bit later is probably where WrestleMania 9 gets most of its flack. The Undertaker is in. Uh, the Undertaker is starting his monster feuds where he finds the biggest and baddest guys and takes them down at WrestleMania. That's just what happens to the Undertaker a lot from like now until from from WrestleMania nine until fuck when he fights Ric Flair maybe I don't know but uh he's going up against Giant Gonzalez El Gigante uh you know before the ending it's actually not a terrible match Taker is still very mobile at this point and El Gigante gets a bad rap but it was. It was entertaining. Taker made Taker made it work, uh, but they got to a point where Giant Gonzalez didn't think he'd be able to beat the Undertaker. So Harvey Whipple him tosses him a rag soaked in chloroform. Yes, this is when uh, your young nine year old Mad Mike, future chemical engineer, first learned about chloroform. Thank you, Harvey Whippleman. But uh, yeah, so chloroform soaked dragged. Knocks the Undertaker out, but the ref sees it, so you get a disqualification, and Undertaker keeps his WrestleMania streak intact. It's great, though, because they carry the Undertaker out, and it looks like, you know, he's done. Then he staggers back. Like, it's... Ri- the Undertaker staggering back and going after Giant Gonzalez is a great moment. It's really, really good. Also, Taker had a great entrance this WrestleMania, too. He came out on the cart with a buzzard. It was like a Centurion's Chariot. It was really, really good. Uh, can't can't fall Caesar's Palace for lack of aesthetic at this WrestleMania. They they did a fantastic job. I dare say it's the best WrestleMania at a casino. I I know there's not a lot of options with that, but it still does beat out four and five, in my humble opinion. So we get to the main event. Yokozuna, the winner of the 1993 Royal Rumble. This is the first, first time WrestleMania winner has gone on for the WWF Championship. Against the current champion, Brett the Hitman Hart. Now, I'm on record saying not a huge fan of the Hitman. You know, that's that's just my speed. But Brett worked his ass off in these matches of Yoko. And Yoko's really great right now. Because he's still as athletic as he can be at this point. Like, he he's young. He's doing spinning heel kicks. He's doing a lot of stuff. And Brett... I remember freaking out immediately. Like, because I think even as a kid, I wanted Yokozuna to win because I didn't like Bret Hart and I thought Yokozuna was really cool. But when Bret Hart actually locked in the sharpshooter on Yokozuna, I thought that was it. Thought that was it. As a kid, definitely thought that was it. But Mr. Fuji, you know, a little salt in the eye, and Yokozuna beats Bret Hart. Not with the bonsai drop. Just with the quick roll-up. So they actually protect Bret Hart a little bit on that, which, you know, as a modern fan, I can appreciate that. Because it'd be one thing if if it was a salt to the eye and then, you know, drag him over for the bonsai. But, um, so, Yokozuna, first heel to win a WWF championship at WrestleMania. First heel. He would have been the first heel to walk out of WrestleMania with the WWF title, but then some bullshit happens. <laughs> it's, it's some bullshit. I'm not going to lie. A nine-year-old me thought this was amazing, kind of, but it's a little bullshit. Um, 
so Hulk Hogan runs out to help Bret Hart. They don't have an established relationship in storyline, except for the fact that they're both faces. Now, you know what? If Roddy Piper came out and helped Bret Hart, totally buy it. Buy it a thousand percent, because I knew they were friends. But um, Hulk Hogan runs out, and Mr. Fuji is like, Ah, oh, Hulk Hogan, you big man, Yokozuna challenges you. And Bret Hart, y- you can't tell what Bret, Hart's mou- what Bret Hart is mouthing, but he's just motioning, go, go, go for it. So there's a WWE Championship match again. Yokozuna versus Hulk Hogan. Fuji tries again for the salt in the eyes. Hogan ducks, big boot, leg drop. You know how that goes. Hulk Hogan, five-time WWF champion. And Yokozuna just couldn't see him. See what I did there with the with the salt and Hogan, John Cena? You get it. But yeah, um, the first time we have two WWE, WWF championship matches at WrestleMania. That'll become a trend. Uh especially now. I mean, we got we got two world title matches at every WrestleMania almost. But uh yeah. I know it gets a lot of heat. It is some bullshit, especially, you know, given everything that was happening with Hulk Hogan around this time. But damn it if it's still not a fun WrestleMania to watch. I defy you to watch WrestleMania and say it's not fun. This one anyway. I love this WrestleMania. Um, it's not. I don't think it's my favorite uh, favorite currently yet. I think that probably still goes to. Um, oh, which one did I say before? Seven, I think. But yeah, um, I love WrestleMania nine so much. It, it's one of my favorites. It's it's probably it's probably my top five. One of my top five manias, or top ten. You know, it, it's some. It's 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 high. It's high. I'll say it's high. But uh, yeah, so if you disagree with me about WrestleMania 9, and I'm sure a lot of people do, hit me up at MadMike4883. Leave some comments in the YouTube channel. Um, hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on the Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM if you have any questions or comments or, you know, if you want to correct anything I'm saying about WrestleMania 9. I just watched it. But, you know, if you guys see things differently, let me know. So um, until then... Guys, we're heading back to where it all began. Again. WrestleMania 10. You know where that is. It's the garden, baby. It's the garden. Oh, can't wait to talk about it. All right. We'll see you guys next time on 32 Manias with Mike.